Wasabi Wallet. I'm fairly private. What's up, everyone? I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. Huddle that Bitcoin. Before we dive into the show, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. They've got Bitcoin savings accounts where you can earn interest on your Bitcoin paid in Bitcoin. They've got Bitcoin backed loans where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to secure a Canadian or US dollar loan. So if you're in a pinch and you need dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin because you think it might be a bad time, this could be an option for you. And for you Bitcoin bulls out there that want double the exposure to the price of Bitcoin, you can check out their B2X offering. If you want to check out any of that, there's a link in the show notes. And if you opt to get a loan with a link, they'll credit you with an additional 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin. And up next, we've got Paxful. I'm partnering with these guys for the month. And this is a peer-to-peer marketplace where you can go on and find and create offers to buy and sell Bitcoin between you and another individual. Now, the draw of something like this is if you're in a place where maybe you don't have a lot of options for buying Bitcoin, while well, these guys have 300, yes, 300 different payment options to purchase Bitcoin. And if you're on the opposite side of the coin and you're looking to sell, you can actually get a pretty decent sum and uh, and get a pretty decent spread on selling your Bitcoin and turning it around. Um, so be sure to check them out. They've also got a killer affiliate program when you, where you can earn some money um, bringing people to the platform. So be sure to check them out. That is Paxful.com. And there's a link to that in the show notes down below. And with that, let's dive into the news. Uh, So there are a number of interesting metrics with Bitcoin that are looking quite bullish for uh, for the protocol, even though we've seen a recent dip in the price over the last few weeks here. Well, that doesn't seem indicative of people's bearishness on the actual protocol. It just seems to be Bitcoin doing its thing. So what are these metrics? Well, number one, the hash rate has hit a new all-time high. So uh, just, I believe today, yesterday, sorry, uh, the network's hash rate reached an estimated all-time high of around 136 quintillion hashes per second, which is insane. Uh, That's according to blockchain.com. Other monitoring services like Bitcoin info charts put it at around 120 quintillion hashes, um, which would still indicate that it has almost tripled in the past year. So the notable thing about this is the halving is approaching, which means that the reward for miners every 10 minutes will be cut in half. Currently, every 10 minutes, 12.5 Bitcoin are dished out to a lucky miner or mining pool that correctly guesses the next block. Um, But that is going to be cut to 6.25 Bitcoin plus whatever Bitcoin uh, transaction fees that are included there, but still a major cut in revenue for miners. And despite that, miners are continuing to ramp up operations and get new hashing onto the network. So that seems to, um, it, it tends to indicate that they're very bullish on the state of the network and that the price may move to support, um, even with a, a, a huge cut in revenue, um, it may move to support that uh, and justify those new machines coming onto the network. So they're ramping up their investment in the network itself. So uh, that is one notable net metric. There's a couple more on a, an article from Cointelegraph here. I won't go into all of them, but a couple notable ones. One is the Bitcoin ASOL, and that sp- stands for Average Spent Output Lifespan. So what is a spent output? That means... Um, when you've executed a transaction from uh, Bitcoin that you held, um, it creates a spent output. And so that uh, spent output um, essentially can sit there until you create another transaction, at what po- at which point your unspent transaction output um, or UTXO is destroyed and it creates a new UTXO. So essentially it's just a measure of how long was Bitcoin sitting there before it was spent again. And those... 
um, the the average spent output lifespan, it shows that uh, the average in the average in days of of uh, spent transaction outputs. And so, as long as the ASOL stays low, we don't have to worry about long term holders um, that are trying to move or sell their coins. And right now, it looks like um, there's not a lot of old time holders that are moving their coins. And another metric that would seem to indicate that as well um, would be the number of Bitcoins that haven't moved for two for more than two years. And that metric is continuing to increase, which is another sign that investors are holding their coins um, much more than even just a year ago. Uh, so if you want to check out a lot of these metrics, I'm going to link to both these articles, the hash rate one and uh, and some of these other ones. And they've got a few other interesting metrics on on this article here from Cointelegraph as well. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Let's move on. Uh, now, this is interesting because I was watching this show on Netflix the other night. And I, had, I actually missed this, but uh, some eagle-eyed Bitcoiners watching Altered Carbon on Netflix, which by the way, if you haven't watched I kind of like it. It's a pretty fun, futuristic show. Uh, season two, anyways. Um, there's there's a shout out to Bitcoin and I guess some other cryptocurrencies, but it would seem that the person uh, that shoved that little Easter egg into the show either may not understand the uh, the monetary policies of of things like Bitcoin or uh, is pretty bearish on them one or the other we'll see but basically uh there's there's a point in the show where um they're going into uh, the main characters are going to uh, steal some supplies they're going on a, a bit of a mission and they need some weapons and so on and so forth so they break into this shop and there's a whole bunch of stuff there and um this is from Twitter here. I just pulled up an image. If you're on the podcast, sorry, you're just going to have to imagine this. Anyways, we've got somebody standing uh, by a shelf of goods and you can see the cost um, of a lot of those goods and some of the cost of those goods. Um, and it doesn't look like they're, they're particularly expensive goods, but they're, they're like, there's a pair of gloves and underneath that, the cost of it is 0.867 Bitcoin, which, you know, with Bitcoin in and around uh, eight eight what nine thousand dollars pretty close yeah that's you know that's like eight grand for a pair of gloves um and and yeah not fe not really uh favorable for bitcoin if uh if if rampant inflation hasn't taken place for bitcoin um also it's the same item a pair of gloves is priced at three thousand and eighty nine litecoin we see some other stuff priced in things like uh zcash and monero um so i mean the whoever put that in there is bullish enough to think these things will still exist but it seems that they may not understand that bitcoin has a capped supply and thus if people are still using it that far into the future especially interplanetary uh that with that many people using a currency like that um, it would be in short supply. One, you probably won't be pricing in Bitcoin, you'd be pricing in sats. And two, you sure as hell wouldn't be paying 86 million sats for a pair of gloves. But uh, who knows? Maybe maybe an inflation bug hit or something. But either way, kind of funny and cool to see these little tidbits uh, drop inside mainstream uh, TV and Netflix shows like this. So uh, yeah, uh, shout out to those that uh, pulled out their eagle eyes and caught this one. Uh, so I wanted to touch on uh, something that came out of the Bent today. I mean, it's it's Marty Bent from Tales from the Crypt. Uh, by the way, if you're not subscribed to his newsletter, the Bent, uh, you should get on that. I will link to this this issue in particular, but you can uh, subscribe there. Uh, so shout out Marty for always. Uh, drawing attention to the important things. And so he brings up uh, a tweet of his that he he tweeted earlier today and elaborates a bit. So he says, and so it begins, NIRP is coming to the USSA sooner than you think. So NIRP, what is that? That is uh, negative interest rates policies. Um, 
and USSA, alluding to a, a communist country or the U.S. becoming a con- communist country. Uh, so what happened is uh, the Federal Reserve came and cut its rate by 50 basis points, which is half a percent, um, cut its interest rate by half a percent. Uh, but they did that completely unannounced. Um, they were expecting a cut, like the market was expecting a cut, but probably not until March 18th, which was supposed to be their meeting. Um, however, this emergency cut uh, seems to be kind of a reactionary based on coronavirus and its effects on the markets. Um, the, the stock market has been dropping like crazy the past week. We saw a rebound a little bit um, after this, but it seems it wasn't enough because there was a bit of a bounce when that first happened, but then it continued to drop. And so let me just pull up. Uh, if we look at Bloomberg for the end of the day, the Dow Jones was down by another 2.94%. The S&P 500 was down by 2.81%. The NASDAQ was down by just shy of 3%. So there were still major drops across the board um, in, in, in the face of the Fed cutting rates, which normally has the complete opposite effect. Not only that, but just... The previous evening, $120 billion were injected into the repo markets overnight, which is essentially quantitative easing, but just unprecedented amounts. Like we're, We've seen more pumped in um, than, than some of the biggest pumps from QE back in the financial crisis. And so in light of all of that, the market is still is still not pumping. It's still dropping. And so that seems to suggest that the markets do not have confidence anymore in the Federal Reserve to be able to get a handle on these markets. Um, so they're they're pushing QE, even though they're not calling it QE, they're cutting rates, and the market is still dropping. That's not a positive sign. And then you have Donald Trump tweeting out the Federal Reserve is cutting, but must further ease and most importantly, come into line with other countries and competitors. We are not playing on a level field. Not fair to the USA. It is finally time for the Federal Reserve to lead more easing and cutting. So he wants more cuts. They're at 1%. uh, Sorry, where are they at? What's their what's their interest rate? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there, I believe, what is the interest rate now? I, it doesn't even say here, but anyways, uh, they, I mean, they cut by half a percent already. We're going to be in negative interest rates in no time whatsoever. And they're, they're basically doing QE without saying QE because they're afraid to say those words. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, printing money like nothing else. We're cutting interest rates pretty soon. When those rates go negative, all of a sudden you have money in the bank, you are being charged for the privilege of lending it to the bank. Um, So that gets into a very, very scary, um, unprecedented state of affairs for the US. Um, And it's just, it seems to be that this is what Bitcoin was built for. Um, This is why Bitcoin is. And um, even though they were able to kick the can down the road, it seems that their arsenal, there's not much left. You can't keep cutting until you, you know, eventually, again, they're just going to have to go into deeply negative interest rates at some point in the future if this doesn't pan out and it doesn't look like it's panning out. So anyways... Holy shit, guys, stack your sats. Stack your sats while you still can. Uh, I guess I will. I know that's kind of um, a, a, a downer note to end on. I guess not if you're holding a ton of sats, but uh, regardless. I guess I'm going to wrap it up there. Guys, thanks very much for watching. Um, of course, do remember to hit like, subscribe, and share. Always hit share um, if you're on YouTube especially. And if you are listening to the audio only podcast version be sure to share that out on your social media now if you want to help the show in another way you can hit up the sponsors down below leaden and paxful and you can also check out rise wallet you guys have heard of them before these guys are friggin awesome uh physical bitcoin gift cards they can pick up at a store near you you gift it to somebody and they're just instructed to download a paired app scratch and scan a code and it creates them a bitcoin wallet on the spot and sends them an on-chain transaction for the face value of the card if you go to risewallet.com and click on locations 
you can find out where you can pick one up. Um, and keep in mind, they're only in Canada right now, but they're looking at expanding. So, so keep an eye out. With that, I am out. Have a wonderful evening, you guys, and I will see you next time for your daily session.